Good morning, friends. July 13, 2019. In a recent video, I was saying I thought uh, philosophy had become rather weak. It doesn't like to get into foundations as much as it used to. I think philosophers might be a little bit insecure about their mathematical knowledge, right? Specialization has continued apace. What Fuller said in Operating Manual Spaceship Earth is the biggest threat to our survival as human beings is everybody's self-compartmentalizing. It's like, okay, this little thing, this little wing on this fly is my problem. This is what I have my PhD in. And the rest of the world's problems are other people's problems. And everyone's got that view, right? I just I just pay attention to punching your ticket in at the turnstile. Don't ask me questions about the design of the whole store or the whole theme park or whatever. And so we don't really plan big picture and politicians certainly don't because they don't have the background or training or encouragement to do so. <clears throat> the, the idea of a comprehensivist as Fuller portrayed himself is more or less ridiculed. Because how can you get a PhD in that? The only way you can get a PhD is in something really, 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 really micro specialized, not something macro. So everyone's just pushed away from a big picture approach, which Fuller says that used to be the pattern because there were actually willful people, great pirates he calls them, who wanted to mind everyone else's business and have no one mind their business. And so that they set up the system to push everyone else into specialties. And then they lost track as well of what's going on because the universe was revealed to be mostly not visible to the human senses because it's off spectrum, right? It's not something you can see or touch. Science discovered this, right? Radio and all that. And it got really hard for the great pirates to see what was going on anymore. And so now we're left with cast adrift as specialists and it's threatening our survival. That was Fuller's story. I think it's a good one. So does the number pi actually exist? I like this, the science asylum. I watch it now and then. Guy is funny, entertaining, but I added a comment here. I said, does infinity exist? And I wrote exist in a silly way, E-G-G, -G, exist, because there's a lot of stress put on this word exist, which means what exactly? It's worth talking about. As Wittgenstein made clear, meaning does not come from pointing. Pi has meaning, but not because it pegs to some object, quote, out there, unquote. Wittgenstein also thought mathematicians were usually not very strong philosophers, easily tripped up. And this is what the guy is doing. He's saying, does pi exist? And then he gets into, well, where's the physical phenomenon to back it up? And you get down to atoms and molecules, and pretty soon all those trillions of digits don't mean anything physically because we don't have any measurements of anything anywhere in the universe beyond a few, you know, digits. And you can say quantum physics has like 18 digits in some some theory that are accurate. You know, 18 digits is nothing, right? Another interesting thing I like to point out is that with these numbers, if you just take the decimal point out, like you've got pi here of infinite digits, as long as you've got that decimal point, it's a number. It's called a real number. But the second you re remove that little dot, it's not even a number anymore because something with infinite digits is not a number, right? If if the de decimal point goes away, it's suddenly not a number. Now, it's not an integer. It's not a natural number. It's just gone. Nonsense. You're outside of math. So there's just that one little dot between meaning and not meaning or sense and nonsense. I think that's pretty interesting. Um quadrays. So part of this does pi exist video, we've got the XYZ coordinate system, which is used to tell us that the world is three dimensional because there's only three axes. Of course, there's the plus and minus of each one. If one's a little bit off angle from the other, does that matter a huge amount? Does it have to be a straight line? It's eight octants that it divides space into. Now with quadrays, we have one, two, three, four rays. So we could say space is four directional. 
we won't fight for the word dimension at first. We'll just say, okay, space is four directional, kind of like in the medicine wheel, north, south, east, west. I mean, everyone on a plane, they like to divide the plane into quadrants, and then they like to go north, south, east, west. And so going out into space, it was kind of a flat earth kind of thing. Let's just add two more directions up and down. North, south, east, west, up and down. And that's where we get this. But if we just want to radiate <clears throat> outward from a, from a center, what's the fewest lines we would need to like divide space into equal regions? And, um, you know, the answer is not six which is what XYZ comes up with. The answer is, I would say, four quadrants. The four quadrants that the quadrates divide the world into is uh, more economical. There's only four of them instead of eight. <clears throat> the quadrates, it used to be flagged <clears throat> as being not that important. Like Wikipedia went out of its way to uh, put a little badge up on the top of this saying, okay, this, this is <clears throat> part of math, but it's not very important part of math. I don't know why they go out of their way to, to tell you that. There's a real, I think, defensiveness here of not wanting to talk about 4D, which is a meme in synergetics. Fuller's like, yeah, the tetrahedron is the simplest topologically, like the four the four directions here are what we mean by 4D. D for direction, D for dimension, and hey, we can do all the same stuff. We can label all points in space, as I do here, and, and we can do it so that the centers of spheres in the CCP, closest pack spheres, we can give them all integer coordinates. We can give them all positive integer coordinates, in fact. Now, the name of this, sh uh, this arrangement of vectors coming out four vectors from a center. That's called a caltrop. So there's something interesting, a new word that we can introduce. And then I've got all the math here to go in between XYZ coordinates and quadrate coordinates. So here you see this chart. As you go down, look at the simple integer coordinates, all positive numbers. Those are the ABCD quadrate coordinates. And then we have three uh, three tuples or three digits, three numbers for x, y, z. And then we need negative numbers as well because why? Because you've got those quadrants, right? <clears throat> and only three of these vectors are called basis vectors. And the other three, we got those, I think, by rotating the three prime or positive vectors and you get a negative of each one. And those aren't considered as important or they're called they're not they're not basis vectors there's they're like this sort of slave labor right they're 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 the the negatives the, the negro the dark the black and they do they do as much work as the whites the positives but they don't get the credit right they're kind of second class so you got first class and second class vectors in this arrangement, three basis and three non basis. Kind of interesting. Um, quadrays, we just have, they're all treated the same, and there's only four of them instead of six. So, like I was saying, I don't believe in parallel universes, but I do think we're always just one click away from getting into the fuller stuff, and we choose not to do that. Like when this speech by the president came out, right, and it was all about airport, airports and Bell were in the same speech, like that the, the freedom fighters took over the airports in 1775, and Alexander Graham Bell was a great inventor. It's like, if you're just thinking a little bit, well, who else was a great inventor who helped make America great? And actually, Bell and Fuller, there's very tight connection there in terms of they both researched the same isotropic vector matrix or octet truss out of which airplane hangars are built, right? So it's like there's a little matrix here of interrelated memes that I would say people studiously avoid. Reminds me of like when the Wall Street Journal, they got the junkiest, oldest version 
of the Dymaxion car that still runs, and they got a driver to, to write about how rickety and old it was. In the meantime, Norman Foster creates a brand new one from scratch with the latest parts, or he, he imitated the parts at the time, but let's just take a look. Norman Foster Dymaxion. And did the Wall Street article talk about this at all, right? Like, oh yeah, there's also um, another version of the car that's just been made, and uh, it, it rides pretty smoothly, right? So that was left out of the article. And if you follow this thread, you can go to uh, Geodesic Dome Restaurant in Riyadh. You can connect dots all over the place if you want, right? It's like there's a lot of parallel universe in that sense, right? Of let's just ignore this universe and stick to what we're told to write. Don't get fancy. Don't go off the rails. Don't leave the known canon of acceptable writings. And I think journalists are good at that now. But even more so university professors. Like where is the philosophy department on the concentration camp issue? And if you don't want to call them that, detention centers, whatever. Kiyoshi Kiramiya, adjuvant, worked with Fuller on Critical Path. He was at Heart Mountain. He, he was born in a detention center for Japanese Americans. No stories on that. Good story that I, a good thing I wrote though is called My Dinner with Kiyoshi. My Dinner with Kiyoshi. Check it out sometime, right? Here's something where you could make a link because we're talking about those detention centers, the Japanese era ones now, the World War II that's in the news a lot. So we could talk about Kiyoshi Kiramiya here, couldn't we? Major human rights activist, fought for people's rights who had AIDS and so on. He's a historic figure. I haven't even checked to see if he's in Wikipedia, because I'm afraid to see he's not, and I don't want to know that. Not right now. Um, what else? Applewhite. All this Q stuff, right? All that. Q and QAnon, and they dug up stuff on Mockingbird. It was all this, like, follow the breadcrumbs, follow the breadcrumbs. And it's like everyone running around, kind of like here in Portland, we have a treasure hunt every year around Rose Parade time and all these clues, and people are like, I'm going to find it. So here's Applewhite, big, big in the Mockingbird, CIA dude. And what does he do with his life after he retires? He works with Fuller on synergetics so you just had to shift the narrative just slightly out of the groove and suddenly you're talking about synergetics again so we got quadres we got bell we got does pi exist because fuller is always like no nature is not using pi it's like nothing with trillions of digits needs to be used by nature right to create bubbles or whatever and he's dismissed because he's just a, a naive guy. Why should he have an opinion? He's not a mathematician. He doesn't have the credentials. But then in the meantime, those who do have the credentials are raising the same questions. How do we model the continuum? Do we need a continuum? Are real numbers, you know, going to be here in a thousand years in terms of concept? Do we really need the real numbers, right, the way we ta teach them? It's just a question, but it's like a good entree into the Bucky stuff if you wanted it. So I'm saying philosophy is weak because it's not stepping up to the plate on the ethics of what is a refugee, what is an asylum seeker. Like I want the universities to weigh in and more than that, help us create asylum cities. And talk about general systems theory. Do we really not have the, quote, money? Is it about money? We, or is it about energy and organization? Can we make the movie of ourselves succeeding? Building asylum cities, taking care of people with nothing. Because they're students. They're global U students. They're university students. Those are your students. Hey, Princeton, those are you, your students at the border. Ever think of it that way? They don't know much yet, but you give them all scholarships, fellowships, whatever you want to call it, 
You're going to leave it to the politicians to flounder around, right? You're going to let Yang and people like that propose a UBI. Where's the academic opinion on UBI, general systems theory, uh, asylum city, pi does not exist, or does it? Foundations of math, quadres, come on universities, come on, come on. Let's get some YouTubes. Any professors out there earning their keep? See, they're going to hate this, right? Because they're specialists and trying to pull them out of their little hermit shells to talk about anything outside what they're already really, really good at. That's not, that's not professional, right? They've got to stick to their specialty or else, right? So we got a lot of ineffectual people, and that was what Fuller said would bring us to the brink, right? Operating manual for Spaceship Earth. Check it out. Talk to you later.